In this video, we're going to take a look at calls, tasks, meetings, and activities. BrightPearl lets you create tasks and activities for yourself and your other teammates so that you can keep on top of a busy to-do list as well as delegate and collaborate effectively. You can see your own task list by hovering over your name and clicking My Tasks. Here you can see a number of different activity types. We'll use the generic term activities for these, and these are not configurable. You can also use this list to see activities assigned to other team members and filter this list in a number of different ways. The status of an activity is configurable. By default, you'll have not started, in progress, and completed. The completed status is special. Activities on that status are hidden from most views and searches, but you can still find them here by filtering for include completed. Some activities are linked to suppliers or customers, and I'll show you more about that later. You can also view, create, and edit activities using the calendar, which is also accessed from under your name. This is a good place to move activities around easily. You can also just click and drag to create an activity here, but if you want to link the activity to a customer or supplier, you need to do it from their timeline. You can group activities by project, which in this particular account has been renamed to analysis codes. So let's say you want to set yourself a task to call a customer about a recent order. Anywhere you see the contact information at the top of the screen, you just need to click the Schedule Call link. Give it a title, choose the event type, choose who it's for, and then choose the date and time. You can ignore the end time if it doesn't matter. Enter any other details you might want to into this box here, and then hit Save. If you want to check your free, open up the calendar in a new tab. Generally though, if you're creating an activity for a contact, we recommend doing this from the contact timeline since there you can see if someone else is already due to call them and also any other important information you might otherwise have missed. Here we can see I'm actually scheduled to call this customer anyway, so I'll just add a note to remind me to chase up the latest quote. If you want to when you're adding notes, you can also upload files. Each time you create or change an activity, an email is sent to the assignee so they don't need to be constantly checking their task list. You can also add other staff members to this task, so that they're kept up to date. And if you've got SMS integration turned on, they'll be sent an SMS message too. As the creator of an event, you're always added as one of the people on that activity. Here's what the email looks like, and this email is sent using a template called the Task Update Email. You can edit that template under Setup, Document Templates, and then Task Update Email. To remove an activity from your list, you either need to mark it as complete, or what you need to do is open it up and delete it from here. Any time you add a note to an activity that's linked to a contact, that note will also be added to the contact's timeline. So how does this all fit with your other company calendars? Whilst you might have spotted a link to synchronize the BrightPearl calendar with your Google Calendar, this is not particularly reliable across different time zones, so we'd recommend you don't use it. BrightPearl only provides a basic task management system, so perhaps just use it for internal delegation tasks and to-do lists. There's no reminder feature, so if that's essential for you, then also create the activity in your other calendar. To configure the Activities feature, have a look at the options in the Setup area under Tasks slash Activities. Here you can set some default options, and here's that special completed status I talked about earlier, and also where you can edit your activity statuses. So there we go. All you need to know about calls, tasks, meetings and activities in BrightPearl.